Hi guys, it's Brenda, and I'm back with the second drawing lesson um, for our Improve Your Drawing series. And this time, well, last time we talked a little bit about your supplies that you would need, and um, I believe we covered the two different types of drawing from your head or your memory, and copying what you see. And copying what I see, what you see is mainly like someone else drew a picture, and you're copying their drawing. Um, we're going to expand a little bit on that. Um, I'll probably do that right now, I guess. Um, when you're looking at someone else's artwork that they have drawn, you're drawing what they have seen, not what you've seen. So their perspective could be off. Their interpretation could be completely different from yours. So you may think that your drawing doesn't look as good as theirs or whatever. And a lot of it is because of your interpretation. And a lot of people don't really take that into account when they're actually drawing um, so I wanted to just point that out it's a lot better if you were to say you want to draw a tree don't draw a tree uh, from a picture that someone else has drawn or one you found on the internet go outside sit down in front of a tree and draw it um, if you can't do that you could go out have someone take a picture of a tree it's still going to be better than copying someone else's art from a tree um, drawing from sight is always so much better um, if you could do it from your memory that's fine too um, in being creative in that aspect but that's where a lot of people start getting disheartened and don't want to draw anymore because they say they can't draw or anything because sometimes the creativity isn't there because a lot of people really think that they know what something looks like but they don't um, you really have to take everything to account um, like when you look at a tree you want to look at the bark you want to look at the lichen you know the, the green uh, growths on the tree um, the leaves how each leaf bends differently you know all the the pores in a leaf I mean that's not exactly what they're called but um, like the sinuses meaning the indents in the leaf. So if you have a maple leaf, you have the five points. Well, the part that curves in is actually called a sinus. And I mean, you really want to take everything into account, the way that the branch bends and everything. And the more that you actually really see something, the better you understand it. Um, a lot of people just think, oh, it's a tree, it's a straight line, and that curves, and then the leaves are like scribble over here. And yeah, yeah, it's good for abstract, but if you actually really want to learn how to draw something, you really got to sit down and look at it and examine it. Um, before I go off on a tangent on that and sit and just talk about that all day and not get anywhere for you all, um, we're going to get on to talking more how I said that if you can write the alphabet, you know, you didn't learn that, you didn't have that when you're a child, you learned that through life, you can draw. It's simple. Um, if you can make the letter I, and I'm kind of doing this behind the camera so I can't see if I'm on screen, but, but just an I, just a line, okay? And the letter C, just quick sketches, I see. If you can make those two letters, you can draw. Um, it's all in perception, the way you see things and breaking things down. A lot of people will say, okay, shapes, uh, let's draw a cat. And they're going to do, you know, something like a circle, ears. Sorry, guys, just doing something really quick for y'all. <laughs> but, you know, something like that, maybe like this. And then, you know, put the whiskers on it. Um, yeah, that's... Does that look like a cat that you guys know? I mean, even cartoon. Does that really look like a cat? Not really. Because they tell you to assume shapes. Okay, a cat's head is brown. Well, no, not really. Um, a cat's head is actually more of an oval. And it has another oval in here. And then when you put all the detail in, you'll start realizing that it's going to look completely different. I'm not going to go into it um, <laughs> too much more. But... The shapes aren't what you really see. They tell you to rough estimate, and in drawing, you really don't want a rough estimate because that's where it leads to the more beginner drawings, I should say. Um, and that's fine, but if you start learning that way, sometimes it could be really hard to learn. You know, I see. I see is all you need. Forget everything else that you've ever done with drawing and do this, okay? Um, the eye is your straight lines. It doesn't have to be straight. Nobody can draw a perfectly straight line. If you measure it, it will be at least maybe a 32nd of an inch off. It's almost impossible. Um, I can draw very straight, but I still can't get perfect. Um, and a C is a curve. Everything in life is made up of a straight 
and a curve, um, man-made and nature. And you'll see that in a minute. Um, like, let's see, um, outside, let's see if I could pick a rock up here. Okay. The rock, you can see that there are, there's a curve right here. It curves in. But then, right here is more of a straight line. Okay, now if you just draw the straight line and then make a little indent for the curve, you're going to start drawing your rock. So, like what we just saw is the straight line coming up like this and then a curve in here. Now, it would have did a curve coming out this way. Now, if you just wanted to put some curves around it like this, maybe another one out like this, and out here, and maybe a little bit like this. And then once we get into shading, look, you have a cute little rock set in the water. Hopefully you can see that. I might have to darken that. I don't really draw dark on the light drawer, but just for demonstration purposes, that's a nice rock sitting in the water for a scene. Simple. That took, what, just a couple seconds? I mean, anybody could do it. It's simple. Remember, I see, that's it. Okay, I'm going to show you a lot of people um, with the assignment that I had given last time with sitting down and looking at something and drawing it from sight. Kind of like what I just did now. I held it and then I turned it to show you and found a spot that had both a straight and a curve so I could demonstrate it for you. And then I only draw what I saw. I didn't turn the rock to get this angle. I didn't turn it to get this angle. I didn't look at the top. I looked at it dead on. Dead on, you're only going to see the front face. Um, so to cover to help you with perspective is if you're looking eye level with something, say a box, you're only going to see this front face. So you're only going to have this view. If you're a little bit like above, elevated over it and kind of looking down, but still on a front view, you're going to have more of a perspective like this where it will taper towards the back. In real life, we know that doesn't happen, but this is what you see. This is what gives the picture depth. You can't go off of what you know of the object. You have to go off of what you see. The eye sees things in a different way than reality uh, for the mind. So you have to trick yourself, your brain, into thinking, this is it. You need to show the perception of it. Um, and we're just going to get a rough idea. If anyone wants to fine-tune their perspective, you know, leave a comment below or private message me and I'll do a video just on perspective of how to accomplish that with any, with any drawing. Um, but for the basic drawing purposes, I'm not. Uh, this is just an introductory to help you improve. Um, okay, so this is straight on, looking straight at it, eye level. This is being a little bit above. Now, if you're going to be a little bit below, what you're going to see is you'll see this, but then it'll... You know, if if it is like floating in air, say, okay, if you're hanging upside down, you would see it this way. And then, actually, it'd be more like this, sorry. And But if you're sitting on the right of your object and say, dead on, you would see something like this. If you're looking eye level from facing this, from your right looking at it. And it would be opposite to your left. So if you're straight on eye level and looking to your left, it would be this way. The top would angle, the bottom would stay straight, and this would curve up, you know, straight line up to meet it. And that would be looking from your left what you'd see. Now if you were above, it would be, this is, you know, the whole cube thing, the whole cube syndrome here. You would be seeing part of this and then part of this if you're looking from the right. And then if you're looking from the left, hopefully I am still in frame here, you know, and it's a little bit above, you would be the same thing here, but coming this way, okay? So that's just a quick little lesson on perspective, um, from which view you would see something. And like I said, so for shapes and shadings for the process of today, um, that's what I wanted to cover. Sorry about the wind, guys, I'm outside because, you know, it's really beautiful out today and I need to get out. I think it'd be a better place to do it out here because natural lighting and it might be easier for you to see. Um, I want to show you how, what I mean about this 
whole thing with looking and actually drawing what you see and not what you know. Okay, what you see here is, you know, your rectangle and it is sandpaper. So you would just draw your rectangle and that's all you would see is this front side. So it would just be flat on your paper. Shading would give it the dimension that you're looking for, okay? But if you're looking at it this way, now you see that there's two lips. That would give you more dimension and make it not so much of a two-dimensional object. So you would have your shading coming up here. This part would be light with a darkness in between here. And then if you were looking at it this way, that would give you even more dimension. So if you're looking to start out with drawing and you really don't want to get too flustered, you start with dead on and slightly turn it and then turn it this way and it, the drawing will get more advanced, there will be more detail. And if you're going to draw something like this, this would be more like your, um, like if you're going to have it where you can see it all, it would be more like your right sided angle box looking down from, an, from one side or the other. Because you could even do it from that side, but that's how you would work with this one. Now shading on something like this would depend on where your light comes from. And I'm only going to do a basic thing on shading. If anyone wants a complete thing on shading, I will show you how to do that in a separate video. Um, only because I need to get a few things done today and I really just wanted to cover IC, um, the straights and curves. But if you were to just roughly say that this is what we are looking at, You want to curve this down, and I'm not making this perfect, I'm just doing this for a quick sketch for you guys to see what I'm meaning about how this would go, okay? So I'm looking at it from this perspective and looking at it from the medium standpoint. So I'm not seeing the top, all I'm seeing is just the twisted side there, okay? Now for the shading, right now my light is kind of coming from this direction. So it's coming like from behind at the top, coming down. So if I were to bring this out, this line will come here. So there would be shading all along this area right here. Everything here would be shaded, okay? And that would mean that everything in here would be. Now, that's only because the light is going to come here and bounce this way because if the light's coming this way, it has room to wrap. But it will not wrap this way because this would be in dark. So your darkest spot would really be right in here and it would fade out to light. So in order to get your curves, what you would do is do dark and then make it lighter coming in through here and then in through here it would just light and I always go and do one shading and then I go in and put the darkest darkest pieces that I want okay we want to show that this actually curves so I will make this come in a little bit to show you that that is actually how this looks it's bent in so if you just a little at a time, it's easier to add dark, but it's hard to take it completely away because a lot of papers will not give you the shading desire you're going to look for once you keep making it light and dark. But you can see how it's starting to curve and show the definition, okay? So you want to do dark to light and just gradually add a little bit more as you go. You know, smudge it out with your finger to get it a little lighter to get it to blend so you don't see all your marks with your pencil, all the lines. Um, now we've worked with a straight. I want to help you more along the lines because we've covered I. Let's work along the lines for C for your curves. Okay, right here, I just got something that everybody uses, you know, hand lotion. And you can see these curves, okay? That's not straight. I mean... Across the top it is straight, but the sides are curved and rounded, and same with the bottom. 
Now, normally, if I'm going to look at this, I would lay this flat and look at it. Um, if you want to work on your shading and getting some dimension to pop, that would be the best way. Going like this is going to be a little bit more challenging, and even so, more like this. You could see where all the dark is hitting, right? The left side is almost in darkness. So, and you see that bright, oops, sorry, the, the bright strip of light here? That would remain perfectly white. This would be your gray area, and this in here would be the dark, and it would get the darkest towards here. Now there is a reflection there, and what I would say is to leave a thin strip of white in this area, and then it'll make it pop from the page. But right on the other side of that thin strip of white, put a light gray just to shade out, to make, really make it bounce off the page, to make it look like that curve's coming. Um, and it's, it's really hard, but if you're more advanced, you'll be able to do it. And this would be white with light grading, light gray. You see how this is lighter and then it gets darker? You would gradiate it up. So I'll show you how to do this here. Let's move this one out of the way. And I'm going to look at this dead on straight down. So it would be like this to you guys. Okay. And you can do it any way you want. Um, but I know straight off the bat, right here we have a, here's our eye straight across. Now here's our curve. Now you can see that this is not so much a dramatic curve as much it is right here with this shadow that takes this whole section right here off because that makes it more of a curve. Now we know that it's kind of like an eye shape, okay? Like an, your almond or oval eye. It's kind of what this is like. You don't want to over exaggerate it because this is really not over exaggerated. This is like something that would fit in the palm of your hand. So you need to kind of keep it more realistic. And then we see that at the bottom it kind of tapers a little bit. So more of your eyes. See? Eyes. C. C. Okay? And then here is kind of just another C, but we want to round it just to give it definition that it's like, you know, bulging out some. And then again, here, we have our eyes, and then we'll have this thin line, and then a little bit bigger, we'll have this one here. And you have your eyes and your C's, and that makes your cap, okay? So there's your basic shape. I mean, it's not perfect, it's pretty good. And as you get further, you can see mine are not too, too close in shape, but they're not too far in shape either. The more you draw, the closer you'll be able to actually draw the real size. Um, I'm just sketching for you now. I'm not actually really practicing drawing. Um, but I do want to share this with you so it's a lot easier for people, you know, for you guys to understand. Now, don't go into the detail in here. Pretend this is blank. Um, do not, you don't have to write it on. Now, for drawing, you don't want to do that in the beginning because it'll make everything look off of, you know, out of proportion. Like right now, I can tell you, this is not straight. But I don't care. It's This is just a sketch for me to practice. So here, what we're going to do is draw a line down here to work with our shading now to get our contour. If, you know, if you do your makeup and stuff like that, you understand the contour anyway. I'm going to bring it in here. And then this side actually is the same because now my light is coming. My light is actually, my light source is right here coming in this way. So it's right across the center of it. So that's going to make all of the sides in shade, which is going to give it the illusion of being round. Now, like I said, see there's a little white strip there. And then this is going to be really dark and we're going to fade it out. Now mind you that the bottom is darker than the top, if you see, because there's more light up in this direction. This works with your coloring as well. So when you're coloring your images, keep this in mind for your light sources. I've seen so many people that their coloring looks really, really beautiful, but then when they they do their darkening and their shading, it is completely off. They shade from this way, from this way, from this way, from that way, and it, it's just, it really doesn't make it look realistic. If you're going for a cartoony look, you know, more power, but if you really want it to look like more realistic, you definitely want to stick to the tips I'm showing. 
Okay, and this is what's going to give you your definition and make the center pop up. And you could just put little bits in here, just get it. And yeah, your fingers will get dirty. I mean, graphite will do that, but normally I wouldn't smudge it all like that. You know, I would take my time with it. But this way you could see that that center is starting to pop up and the back is sinking into the page to give you the perception of it being not two dimensional, uh, almost three. And if you know you wanted to continue with this, the light source coming this way, there is with it laying flat right through here and right through here and just a teeny bit right here. This is actually the shadow that it casts, like when you're walking down the street and the sun is to your back and you can see the shadow in front of you. This is the actual shadow that the light is casting. So if you wanted to go as far as to create the shadows from the natural atmosphere, this is how this one would look. You can see just the slight darkness right in through here. Yep, you can't even see it on my own screen. Sorry. It's like a slight darkness, like right under here and under here and then under this section right here. And then with this one, this one doesn't have, believe it or not, the way like this, the shadow would be hidden. You're not going to see much of that except for just this tiny little line of shadow right here on this side, which would make it pop off the page. And it wouldn't even be a gradiated shower shadow. That would just be a dark shadow. That would be it. But that is today's lesson in I see streets and curves and shading. Um, actually, let me show you. Um, some people will start off dark and then gradiate to a light shade. You can do that. Um, some people will just start light and then just continually go over until they get to the dark that they want. Um, work with it and see which style you like better. Um, I do go in and put it in and then I'll put my dark in and then I'll gradiate out from there. Um, it all depends on what medium I'm working with. But if you practice that, you practice your pressure, you'll get the shading down. Um, yeah, and I think that pretty much covers it for today for your IC, for your shapes and shading. Um, and I want you, it's good to know your light source, so try to figure that out as well, okay? Um, last time we did the whole sit down and look at two items don't move them okay well don't look to the side to see the side measure or stand up to get a better look sit and look directly at that item either from an angle above it on the side however you want to go about it but you want to stay in the same position and get it done um so what i was thinking is let's go ahead and repractice that okay you can draw the same things you did last time or try something new um, if you try the same thing you did last time, incorporating this, the light source and the IC and some of the shading, see if you did the picture any better. You know, if you're if you want to do that, um, that's always a great thing to to redraw what you did with your new, uh, you know, the new information that you have to work with. You might see an improvement. That's always a very good confidence booster. Sometimes it might be a little harder, but let me know. If you need any help whatsoever or have any questions, leave them below. Um, you can message me. I'll put the email to contact me through in the description box below. So you can get me there if you want or if you want to send me pictures because you're not confident enough to put them up or you, you, you don't do videos or you just don't want to. You can send me a picture there to that email and I'll um, give you any feedback on it if you would like. So let's, you know, find a spot and pick up our pencils and start the next task of repeating what we did last time just draw a couple items together the same ones you did the different ones and if you want um we're going to talk about uh two different things side by side next time a completely different shape um and i'm going to work on that and show you a little bit about that 
So if you want, for an extra assignment if you get done quick, is try a self-portrait. Sit and look in the mirror and try to draw yourself. Now, mind you, this is really a hard thing. A lot of people say it isn't, but it really is. Um, I remember the first time I did it, it took me probably about three hours and I got very, very discouraged. Um, I did have to walk away and go back to it. Don't give up, try it. Um, this is for your own benefit because I want you to try something like that now. Whenever you get a chance, do a self-portrait. Um, because later on in the series, I want you to do it again and see your improvement. You will definitely see an improvement, but it's always fun. Um, yeah, so before I keep out of building on about, you know, everything, I'll let you all go. And I hope to hear from you all. I hope this helps. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.